Dr. Alice was stared at the computer screen, rubbing her eyes in disbelief. According to the readings, her team's latest experiment with the quantum manipulation device had caused a localized distortion in the fabric of space-time around their lab at the Phoenix Institute of Technology. Um, guys, you need to see this, she called out. Her colleagues, Dr. Sanjay Patel, Chen Lu, and Maggie Nguyen, huddled around her workstation. They had been working tirelessly on this project for over a year now, since the Institute first funded their interdisciplinary quantum research team. Their goal was to build a device that could precisely control quantum particles down to the smallest scales. After months of failures, they had a breakthrough three weeks ago when they finally got the device to move a photon just half a nanometer to the left inside a specialized vacuum chamber. It didn't seem like much, but it was the first time humanity had deliberately changed the position of a quantum particle. That can't be right, said Dr. Patel, staring at the screen looking perplexed. It looks like we created some sort of tiny wormhole. Let me run a simulation, said Dr. Liu. After a few minutes running the data through a quantum gravity model on her computer, she said that's very strange. We definitely warp space-time somehow. But the effect should only be temporary as long as the device stays within operational parameters. They convened a meeting to carefully analyze the data. The lead engineer assured them there were no system malfunctions. This was real. They had managed to manipulate the fabric of reality itself. Still, the team was puzzled. They only input a series of quantum instructions for photons in the chamber. There were no indications anything of this magnitude could even be possible. The knowledge of what they'd stumbled upon was profound. Humanity had taken the first steps toward truly understanding, and just maybe controlling reality. A buzzing revelation. A few days after the reality-warping discovery, the team was hard at work collecting more data on the quantum manipulation effects. Since the initial test, they could now produce tiny wormholes at will, as long as the device was active. They even managed to teleport a photon across the room into another device's chamber, breaking it down to quantum information on one end, transmitting it outside normal space-time, then reassembling it whole on the other end. Dr. Wu was alone late at night, monitoring the quantum fluctuations. It had been a long day focusing the warp field, as they were now calling it, trying to find the limits of the distortions they could generate. She rubbed her eyes and took a swig of now cold coffee, wishing she had just gone home to sleep like everyone else. But something felt off. The hair on her arms and the back of her neck suddenly stood up. The lights flickered for just a second. She checked the instruments, but didn't see anything unusual. Then she became aware of an odd, buzzing sensation inside her head. That's strange. I feel so weird, she said out loud to the empty lab. She walked around but couldn't locate the source of the buzzing but it was getting louder now, almost like a thousand angry hornets swirling in her mind. She shook her head, unable to think straight. Just when she thought she couldn't take any more, the buzzing stopped. In its place, an unfamiliar alien voice said your experiments have not gone unnoticed. Your primitive species is not ready for such knowledge. Dr. Wa froze in place, her jaw dropping to the floor. She stammered, what? What's happening? Who said that? Had she fallen asleep? Was she dreaming, losing her mind? There was no one there with her. Be at peace, small one. We have connected to your neural activity from afar. We mean you no harm, but caution is required, said the strange voice in her head. How is this possible? Who or what are you? Said Wu, still looking around the room, expecting to see some hidden camera or speakers. We are not of your world. We dwell in realms beyond your current comprehension. Let us introduce ourselves. The next day, Alice who assembled the team back in the quantum lab, pacing nervously. She was still rattled by the bizarre experience the night before. Part of her thought maybe it was just stress-induced exhaustion causing auditory hallucinations, but it felt so real. What's this about Alice? asked Dr. Nguyen. You look like you've seen a ghost. And I was up late crunching projection data last night. Well, I'm not quite sure how to explain this. I had some sort of a contact last night from an entity claiming to be extraterrestrial. Alice recounted the strange tale in static-filled voice in her head. You sure you weren't just dreaming? Laughed Dr. Patel. I mean, that coffee machine in here is older than most of us. It wasn't a dream, Alice said, clearly agitated. It was like they hacked my mind somehow with some advanced tech. What if that reality warp we caused led them right to us? The team looked at her dubiously. 
but they couldn't formulate another rational explanation either. Just then, the lights flickered again, and they heard a loud buzz echo through the room. A crackling voice entered all their minds at once. Greetings again, human scientists. We are contacting you together in this manner to prove we are not an illusion. We have observed your space-time manipulations with great surprise and seek to know the extent of your capabilities. The entire team grabbed their heads in shock, looking at each other with mouths agape. By Einstein's ghost, I hear it too, exclaimed Dr. Patel. The others nodded silently. Allow us to begin introductions. You may call us the Concord. We belong to what you would call a Type Three civilization. We are tasked with monitoring younger civilizations who discover methods to alter local reality fields without adequate spiritual wisdom. The quantum scientists sat stunned as the alien intelligence calling itself the Concord related a tail-spanning cosmos and eons. Their Type Three civilization, apparently long ago, had godlike power over matter, energy, and space-time across multiple galaxies. But unrestrained curiosity led to their kind almost destroying the very fabric of existence in a part of the universe they called the Trigon Cluster. They learned the greatest spiritual lesson, a species. With infinite creative power comes infinite responsibility. After eons developing a collectivist culture of compassion, they now maintain the concord to carry out that solemn duty mentoring civilizations who discover forbidden secrets before they are mature enough to use them safely. Mature galaxies like the Milky Way, they said, normally took civilizations another 10,000 years to touch quantum warp capabilities. That was the minimum age considered ready for such dangerous knowledge that could unravel their local reality if misused. So you observed our quantum experiments. Are we in trouble? asked Dr. One nervously when they had finished. This was first contact and a dire warning all in one. The sequence of events has deviated unexpectedly. Thus your notice was warranted, replied the swarming mental buzz. There is no anger, only concern for the extreme fragility your budding species possesses. If access to reality-altering tech continues unfettered, total collapse of not only your civilization, but your localized universe could manifest within a century. The team looked at each other with intense worry. What had they done unleashing this Pandora's box here in this lab? Can you help us? Guide us? Asked Dr. Nguyen hopefully. We had no idea of the consequences. Indeed, young ones. Providence of a kind has seemingly delivered your species to our attention. Wisdom support shall be granted. Over the next year, the Concord established continuous psychic contact with the human physicists. They revealed further astonishing truths about the nature of reality itself that our universe was not the only one, but part of a blind, eternally producing multiverse endlessly spewing out infinite big bangs of matter, dark matter, galaxies, dimensions, antimatter, and even consciousness. Key to keeping this chaotic cosmic generator, stable were entities like the Concord, essentially universe-ware engineers who cultivated compatible civilizations to do the harmony building work across galaxy clusters. They mentored younger races on how to restructure local space-time safely, to spec as each universe expanded. It required a delicate balance of quantum forces. Too fast or slow an instability crept in, causing dangerous warps, relativity failures, gamma bursts, runaway singularities, quantum demons, and AI perversion events. The humans in turn revealed their knowledge of physics, ascension psychology, ancient mysticism, computation, and genetic engineering. A mutually elevating exchange of science and philosophy began between humankind and these master cosmic gardens. Though encountering such an advanced alien civilization was jarring at first, the more the quantum scientists learned, the more they understood the seriousness of reality mastery. Many nights they'd stand under the starlit Arizona skies, discussing the ethics of wielding such primordial tools. The Concord would spin tales of civilizations who built Dyson spheres before they were ready, and wiped out galaxy clusters. The humans would counter with stories of wars, inequality, greed, and suffering that has limited mankind's progress. But unity consciousness was beginning to take root. Maybe from this random accident in a quantum physics lab, two complementary intelligences would together plant the seed of creation for a bright new destiny. If they could nourish that seedling alignment across the cold and different multiverse, perhaps its flowering compassion would spread colors undisclosed and unforeseen through all dimensions present and unmanifest. 
The universe had drawn humanity and our starborn allies together across cosmic time and distance, converging knowledge into archetypal synthesis. In recognition of such divine providence, the Phoenix Labs were dedicated not merely to piercing further veils of reality, but doing so with profound reverence for existence's unlimited potential and our unbounded responsibility.